This was the big blood sucking comeback for Christopher Lee, one of the most interesting horror titles of the 1960s, and one of the most interesting posters that came with the movie about a half naked woman with two bandage bandages where Dracula's fangs have entered his neck. This is the big one, ladies and gentlemen. Dracula has risen from the grave. The supernatural horror film came out in 68, directed by Freddie Francis and produced by Hammer. It's the fourth entry in the Hammer Dracula series and the third to feature Christopher Lee as Count Dracula, the titular, the titular vampire. The film stars Rupert Davis as a clergyman who exercises Dr- Dracula's castle and in doing so, unwittingly resurrects the Count back from the dead. Uh, Dracula has risen from the grave, also as Veronica Carlson, Barry Andrews, Barbara Ewing, Ewan Hugh Hooper, and Michael Ripper. It was followed by Taste of the Blood of Dracula in 1970. In 1905, in an Eastern European village, a young altar boy discovers the corpse of a young woman crammed inside a church bell, another victim of Count Dracula. One year later, following the events of the previous film, Dracula has been destroyed. Monsignor Ernest Muller comes to the village on a routine visit, only to find the altar boy is now frightened mute and the priest has lost his fate. The villagers refuse to attend mass at the church because the shadow of Dracula's castle touches it. To bring an end to the, to the villagers' fears, Muller climbs to the castle to exorcise it. The terrified priest follows only partway up the mountain and Muller continues alone. As he exorcises the castle, attaching a large metal cross to his gate, a thunderstorm occurs. The fleeing priest stumbles and is knocked unconscious when his head strikes a rock. The blood from the head wound trickles into a frozen stream, through a crack in the ice, and onto the lips of Dracula, <coughs> reviving him. Muller returns to the village, reassures the villagers, and returns to his home city of Kynenberg, where he lives with his widowed sister-in-law, Anna. Unknown to Muller, Dracula takes control of the priest. Furious that his castle is now barred to him, Dracula forces the enslaved priest to reveal his name uh, of the exorcist. The priest desecrates a coffin to provide a sleeping place for Dracula and leads him to Kynenberg, where the Count determines to take a deter, determines to take his revenge on Muller's beautiful niece, Maria. Dracula enslaves a tavern girl named Zena. Zena almost succeeds in bringing Maria under Dracula's power, but Maria's boyfriend, Paul, who lives and works in a bakery beneath the, the tavern, rescues her. Dracula kills Zena and orders the priest to destroy her corpse before she turns into a vampire. So the priest burns her body in the bakery oven. It's a very effective scene, by the way. The priest then helps Dracula locate Maria. Dracula climbs over the rooftops of nearby buildings, enters Maria's room, and bites her, similar to the Graham Stoker style. Now, Moeller enters Maria's room just as Dracula has bitten the girl and pursues a fleeing figure across the rooftops. He is knocked down by the priest. Moeller makes his way back home, where his sister-in-law cares for him. He summons Paul, knowing that he will help protect Maria because of his love for her. Muller passes on a book, which contains the rights of protection against vampires and ways to defeat them. Before he succumbs to his wounds, Paul enlists the priest, not knowing he's under Dracula's spell. Unable to break free from Dracula's influence, the priest attacks Paul as they watch over Maria, who is falling under Dracula's spell. Paul defeats the priest and forces him to lead the way to Dracula's lair. They try to stake Dracula through the heart, but the faithless priest and the atheist Paul are not able to say the required prayer, so Dracula rises and removes the stake himself. He kidnaps Maria and flees to the castle, pursued by Paul and the priest. Now at the castle, Dracula orders Maria to remove the cross from the door. She throws it over the parapet in the ravine below, where it lands upright, wedged between the rocks. Paul fights Dracula on the parapet and throws him over the side, and he's impaled on the cross. The priest, freed from the vampire's influence, recites the Lord's Prayer in Latin before collapsing, and Dracula perishes, dissolving into dust. Reunited with Maria and having apparently regained his Christian faith, Paul crosses himself while viewing Dracula's remains. Now, produced by Ada Young, uh, cinematography by Arthur Grant, music by James Bernard, uh, Warner Path Aid UK distributed, or Warner Brothers Seven Arts in the States, came out November 7, 68. So this is one of the most popular sequels in the uh, Hammer oeuvre, and for obvious uh, re- uh, reasons, because the Hammer production was shot at Pinewood Stu- Studios, a very good uh, location for it, situated in Ivor Heath, Berkhamshire. Uh, Berk- uh, Missing are the approach road, coach path, and moat scene in front of Castle Dracula and Dracula. 
and the Dracula Prince of Darkness. Those films were made at Bray Studios. Now, the film was photographed by Arthur Grant using colored filters belonging to director Freddie Francis. Also, a cameraman who used them when photographing the innocents. Whenever Dracula or his castle is in a scene, the frame edges are tinged crimson, amber, and yellow. Initially, Terrence Fisher was the director of the film, but dropped out after breaking his leg in the automobile accident, and Freddie Francis stepped in. Now, in Australia, the film was the first Hammer Dracula to be passed by the censors. The previous films Dracula and Dracula Prince of Darkness were banned. The film was slightly censored and ran for a three-week season at Sydney's Capitol Theatre in January 1970. Now, Howard Thompson, New York Times, uh, wrote, Dracula has risen from the grave, yes again, and judging by this junky British film in color, a splatter with ketchup or paint or whatever to simulate the clown's favorite color, he can descend again. Variety didn't like it, called the film a tired episode, adding the story's slight, the horror and the blood curdling uh, central to these pics is minimal, and even Dracula uh, himself appears bored at being resurrected yet again. The monthly film built in the UK uh, gave it a rave review, writing that the film was rather short on shock sequences, but had a nice gory opening and a suitable horrific finale. Audience in both Britain and the US applauded the movie, which became, at the time, Hammer's highest grossing film. The Hammer story, the authorized history of Hammer films, called the film a major triumph of style over content, writing that the film succeeds by virtue of Francis's adventurous direction. On Rotten Tomatoes, the film has approval rating of 80% based on reviews from 15 credit, uh, critics. Of course, on November 6, 2007, a big day for the, for the Hammer fans, the film was released as a part of a classic DVD four-pack along with Dracula, Taste the Blood of Dracula, and Dracula AD 72. On October 6, 2015, the film was released on Blu-ray as part of a Hammer collection pack with The Mummy, Frankenstein Must Be Detroit, Destroyed, and Taste the Blood of Dracula. It was also released on Blu-ray separately. Now, this was a big drive-in hit when I was growing up. And the title alone was going to draw a lot of people. But the uh, the kind of the ribald uh, posters that were done with it were pretty effective. For me, I give it three stars out of four. The only reason it's not a four out of four is because, literally, there's less blood in this one than other ones. But a more basic plot, when you reject the Lord, Satan will rise, and the vampire Dracula is the optimum of Satan. So, ladies and gentlemen, it's our latest Hammer review. If you like what we're doing here, give us a like, comment, subscribe, or share. Bye.